All right, what's up, everybody? So I got a, another review I wanted to do on a knife. I actually should be reviewing that, to be honest with you, because that is the first knife that I've ever technically used in an outdoor situation. I used it last week. Uh, that big-ass tree of mine right there, I cut probably 40, 50 frickin' branches off, and each one of those branches has about anywhere from 10 to 25 branches on it. And I used this Buck 119 to skin every one of those branches off of it. And this thing cost me like $69. There isn't one freaking mark on it. And this is 420HC, all right? So I thought the edge was going to roll up and all kind of crazy shit. And I'll tell you what, I didn't even touch it up. And the edge is still paper slicing sharp. <laughs> so... Oh, you guys that think we got to go out there and buy some freaking thousand dollar knives, you don't have to, all right? The collectability of knives is there for people like me, but, you know, design and all that good stuff we like to look at and see. But if you're looking for a good knife that's actually usable and for a hell of a lot cheaper price, that'll hold up very well for you. The Buck Y19 has been around for a long time and it still works good. So I just wanted to throw that in my video here before I get started on what we're here to talk about the Medford Knife and Tool Sniper. So I went out and I picked this up on the trade. <clears throat> I had a, I had a double-edged Nephilim from uh, Heritech Knives. I really like that knife, but I also have a much shorter dagger from Microtech, so the SBD. I really like that knife a lot. Uh, that's the one that I carry. I know I mentioned in one of my videos about the Heritech that the bigger one I carry was for the alligator farms and all that shit because, I mean, that thing's going to stick them pretty good. But at the same time, I liked it, but I didn't like it. And the reason I really didn't like it so much was just because of the fact that I like carbon fiber a little bit more than what the handle material was on that knife. So uh, I actually seen one in titanium as well, flame titanium that I like very much. So I'm, I'm still going to get that knife back because I do like it. You know, it is a great knife. But the only reason I wanted to go and trade it up was just because it's not something that I really wanted. Uh, neither was this by any means. And I'll get into that in a second here. But that knife I could have done without for a little bit. And uh, that's why I ended up with this in a trade. I actually went over to a place in Sarasota called the Gun Shop, all right, Medford Knife and Tool. They are a dealer for them. The Medford Knife and Tool actually sends quite a bit of shit over to them, and they actually get rid of it fairly quickly. They got some used stuff in there, and they've got stuff that people had in their pocket. I mean, hell, they, they got really good prices on it, too. Like, it's used prices. They take about almost $200 off on some of the shit, okay? So, very very good place to buy knives from anyway on with this so this is one of the things i did a trade and picked it up i did take off the big bulky ass freaking clip the tech lock because i fucking hate those things and the reason i hate them is because this is a small enough knife that you can throw inside your waistband all right it is big it's not as bulky as you think. It is a 190 thou thick blade. Or actually, no, it's bigger. It's a quarter inch thick blade. Same as what my Strider VB is right there. It's pretty heavy, but it fits really good inside the waistband. You know, matter of fact, I've been carrying it ever since last week with no issues. But the tech locks are great for military, law enforcement. You know, if, if you want to wear that big bulky ass thing on your freaking belt that's already heavy. These things made by Mummert Knives are awesome. And I've I've got two of them. You can get it either to the left or the right for the pocket clip itself to accompany whatever sheath you need to have have it on. You know, if the holes are on this side, obviously you want to have one that's to the, the pocket clip side that's to the right. If your holes are on this side, you want it to the left. I'm a right-hander. The holes are on this side, so definitely went with the left, right? This one's called Dragon Scale. So it looks pretty cool as well. But they hold these knives very, very good against your waist. And it clips onto your onto your belt with no problem. I wear a, a gun holster belt, so I got a really heavy belt. And this thing just holds very well. So like I said, there's nothing wrong with tech locks. These things, to me, are much better. 
Uh, we also have a, another clip that is much better, and I'll show that because I'm going to do a video later, but that is your UT clip, ulti clip. All right, these things are freaking badass, and yes, they will fit on that knife as well. So other options available for these. Go ahead and slide it out so as you can see, there is an actual thumb mark right here that you can just kind of push against, slide the knife out of the sheath. It's got pretty good tension on it. It does not shake all over the place while it's inside that sheath. Noise. And it, it comes out fairly easy. I'm, I'm not a big fan of Kydex sheaths, you know, because they do make noise when you're pulling your knife out or whatever. They do retain your knife very well, but if it's lined with something, I think they're a lot better. I mean, especially if you're a sniper, right? This is designed for the sniper. I think you want to be the quietest person out in the frickin' woods or out in the field. You know what I mean? So if you had somebody sneaking up on you and this is what you had to go to and you start sliding this out and they hear the pop or the slide of you pulling that knife out, that could lead you into a potentially hazardous situation. You know, I'm not a sniper by any means. I'm not uh, military, law enforcement, any of that shit, but to me, I'm just trying to make sense out of something, you know, and if it's, I've seen a lot of movies about snipers, I've read a lot about snipers because I've always had a, a fascination with them, you know, so I've seen a lot and read a lot, but I just don't think that a Kydex sheath is the way to go because of potential noise. That's my only thought behind it. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. If you're one of the people that's used it out in a real world situation and you never had to worry about that, let me know. Anyway, this has a rangefinder cut into it. All right, so you can, I believe that's for the average size of a five foot seven or a six foot man is what they base it on. I've never really, you know, all the scopes nowadays come with all this shit worked into them. So actually using this in a real world situation where your, your scope is broken or I don't know, something's fucking happening and you actually had to use this, it would be great to know how but Medford Knife and Tool does not give you instructions on how to use this. And it's, you know, I mean, he shouldn't, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it'd be cool if you could download a video from him and maybe he could have some information on it. But if you're a sniper and you went through sniper school, you know how to use this shit, bottom line. And this was designed for the sniper team. So obviously they're gonna look at it and buy it and know how to use it. Every goddamn tick mark on this son of a bitch, which is great. Uh, we also have a scope ring adjusting tool on the back side. And we've got a flathead screwdriver for adjusting the scope as well. Which is kind of cool. Ergonomics on this knife. I owned one of these before. That's what I was going to get into earlier. So I had one of these with the green handle. I do not think they changed the design of it. But the first one I had was when he first started making them. And for some reason, I did not like it. I lasted about a day with it. I actually did a video in the past on it, and then I got rid of it. So it just wasn't ergonomically comfortable for me at that time, maybe. Like I said, I don't know if he changed anything. But I put this in my hand last week, and I was like, wow, for some reason it feels a little bit different, or a lot different. I mean, it really feels good in my hand compared to what I remember from the first one that I've ever owned. So feels very good ergonomically. If you are a big guy, you might have a little bit of a problem. You know, I've got small to medium sized hands. So I think if you're a bigger guy, large hands, you might have a little bit of a problem using that choil here, but uh, you would have to actually go fit it to your hand to make sure of that. Other than that, I think even if you have large hands, this knife is gonna fit your hand very well. You can see how it fits in mine, but it feels freaking great. Like I said, I've been carrying it for a week and no issues. I mean, even with the weight of it, I haven't had any issues. Very nice knife. It does have G10 with a little bit of texture on it for grip. So very well done there. It's not radius, but the edges are just cut down in a way that it feels pretty good. It is one piece, full tang, D2 steel which D2 is something that can be sharpened in the field. I know a lot of people, including myself over years, are like, fucking D2's hard as hell, you can't sharpen it, blah, 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 blah. Well, Medford actually touched it up. I believe he did a video, it was probably about three or four years ago I saw a video. 
but he touched up the edge on that video and if I remember correctly he was using a damn cup you know one of them paper cardboard cups I forget what they call those but it's just a paper one you buy at Walmart you know and when they make those cups they make them with clay inside of it so it is a good tool to not sharpen an edge so to speak but definitely to touch it up you know it's kind of like a strop I guess you can say and he did that and he was talking about how to do it and he was complaining about how everybody thinks D2 is such a fucking hard steel and they don't want to use it and blah 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 well they designed this knife for the purpose you're a sniper you're out in the middle of the damn field somewhere and this is what you got to use and survive with so I don't think they're going to make you something that you're going to have to also carry a backpack full of fucking Lansky sharpening tools to put your edge back on it all right if if you need to reprofile it that bad then damn you were in a situation where you really needed a freaking knife and had to use it to that that maximum level where you just busted it fucked it up and there's nothing you can do so now you're forced to use something else as a knife because obviously you're not going to reprofile anything out in the field but the steel is designed so that you can actually put the edge back on it resharpen it obviously a lot harder than what a k-bar would be but it's still possible so good steel according to certain individuals i'm still not a big fan of d2 just because i mean reputation over the years and not so much as what the steel actually did for people but just word of mouth right i mean we we hear a lot of shit on the internet we see a lot of shit on the internet we hear it if you go to the blade show you know d2 is great d2 sucks there's, there's this whole big deal about all kind of different steel so i kind of developed my reputation based on you know people saying and not actually using because if you guys know my videos I don't really use a lot of my knives, actually none of them, except for, like I said, this one. And if I could see that that one held up to what it held to for me last week, then I can only imagine how good this would hold up. So I'm pretty, pretty, uh, that's fucking amazing that 428C holds up as well as it does. So good steal there for everybody. Anyway, with this one, it is a great buy. It's about a four and a quarter inch blade on it, I believe, sharpened edge. It's got a great weight, so yes, you can use it for choking up a little bit and chopping. Uh, just as a size comparison here, I'm going to put it up next to the Strider VB because that's also a quarter inch thick blade. Strider's a little bit longer, obviously. Can see that for sure but they're both designed with the you can stab with it all right if you can see the tip obviously on the tanto edge that's definitely a, a piercing edge but if you can see how the tip is designed it almost looks like it's designed as a dagger on the tip of that so I think you will be pretty good stabbing with either one of these knives uh, they're both about the same thickness at the and Medford's probably a little bit more narrow, which will lead it to stab probably easier than this. Look at that. Strider's just freaking, it's damn near a quarter inch thick at the tip. So that's for prying open military boxes and all that kind of shit. So badass knife. Good luck finding one of these. I got lucky as hell. This knife was actually traded from somebody that used to work at Castlegate, a friend of mine. He got it on a trade, and then I picked it up from him, so that's how I ended up with it. But they're really hard to find out in the market. I threw this one up here as well. This is actually made out of a Seminite stone. I had to throw this out here. Motherfucker, I bought this at a damn, uh, what do you call them goddamn people, the Psychic Festival. Brought it into my house and my daughter started having fucking nightmares. So now I got to burn a bunch of sage and shit. <laughs> uh, but definitely a cool freaking piece made out of the, made out of stone. Since I'm into knives, I saw it and I had to have it. But guys, this is a good knife. Made for knife and tool. Pick one up. You know, it's they're not badly priced either. They're anywhere from three hundred and fifty to four hundred and twenty-five dollars. So your average knife price piece. All right.
Peace out, everybody. Hope you enjoy.